The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. Lost day of the week. Lost trading day of the week, that is. And Dow's down six at 17,751. S&P's unch. A 2,077 comp index is down nine at 5,004. Gold is down seven at 1,161. And this is going to be very interesting. I'll talk about it in a moment because we're going to look at the dollar and the gold relationship. Um, and silver is down two cents at 15.57. You got platinum down. I agree, copper is up a tad. Crude oil is up a little bit, but it's bonds. Bonds are now up almost a point at 149 uh, in the 149.20s. Most importantly, the dollar is down about 35 cents. Now let's just talk about this. So, uh, oh wait, we can't talk about it because I wanted to do what I planned right here. This is Technical Friday, being Thursday, last day of the week, because tomorrow is a holiday, market holiday. Let me just show you something. In the chap wave methodology, there's certain ways of counting each successively higher peak, making it as easy as possible. The objective is get you to a D, and from there on, other techniques come into force. So what we've got here in the five-minute chart from the low that was made just before 10 o'clock at an e mini at 2071, you went to peak A, B, C, and D. And D stopped right there at about um, five minutes past seven this morning, 10 minutes past seven and was in the 2075 uh, area, pulls back a little bit, and then has a sudden spiral to an E and an F. That could have been technically, you could have considered it to be another A, B, C, D, but really it's a continuation pattern. That peak F is a right arm extension in the Chapman Way methodology. It goes to 2079, round number high. And then it turns around, and then there's that pattern that I call the Eiffel Tower, looks like an uppercase A, straight up, straight down. Comes down, breaks the left side low, not a good sign, tries to rally, um, and then it, it, it just can't hold any rally. And it's turning down, and now the, the S&P has just gone down. So the Dow's down 17, the S&P's down thirty, and the E-minis are down 3. That's what we're looking at. It's the same thing when you look at, doesn't matter in the Chapman Wave what time frame you're looking at. doesn't matter whether you use the technique of using the MACD and all the, all the other things that I add. Look. This is the same chart of the 10 minute chart. On the left is one with technicals, on the right is one without, but there it is. There's a very big spiral from two o'clock this morning, and the spiral starts at 2059.75, and it goes whoosh, peak A, pulls back, and then it goes straight up, no peak until it hits that little doji high at five o'clock this morning on the first, uh, yesterday on the first at 2072 round number and pulls back, takes its time, pulls back for quite a while, narrow. These are very bullish patterns when you have a very narrow channel to the downside. Technical Friday, so we're going to talk technically. And that channel, it's like a Chapman wave falling axe formation. When that channel gets broken to the upside, very often it starts a very nice move to the upside. You could even start another channel, but this time to the upside, making A to B equals C to D. However, in this case, it just breaks out and starts another peak, A, B, C, D, goes to an E, and that E is at uh, 2071, goes flat sideways, starts another buy mode. Let me just put that in here. That would have been difficult to uh, do an up arrow until much later on. And it goes peak A, B, C, D, and then it goes to E and an F. It pulls back, and then it goes again. This is an easier one to get. And it goes peak A, B, C, D, pulls back the same pattern that we've seen for quite some time, where it goes to the D or E, and then it takes a sideways move, and then it has a sudden spiral to the upside early this morning, just before 9 o'clock, and it goes whoosh up to the high today of 2079. Round number high, there's that doji candle, pulls back, and it goes trough A, trough B, trough B, C, and we're in leg D to the downside, having taken out, now I wanted to do a left side, a right side price time match, couldn't get there in time, but let me show you what I'd be looking at here, right there to the peak F high, right there, that's my plumb line, right there's my plumb line. What's a plumb line? It's the point that you would love to see on the, uh, in an arch formation or a cup formation um, that says, look, it says there should be 
not always the case. Sometimes you have to use a little artistry, but most of the time I like it to be exact. And there it is, to the bar. We went right there. Well, it's not to the bar because it broke one bar uh, quicker. So here we are. This is the, the green is the left side. What a lovely technique this is. A little bit labor intensive, and I'm sure that I could organize something to do it automatically. But I have to tell you something. At this particular point, I still find the eye is way better, way, way, way better than the uh, geometry that you'd have to try to calculate um, views via some kind of uh, program. And that, that takes in a whole bunch of things that, that, are, that are very different. So here we are. We're breaking down. There's the left side, right side, exact price, tie, match. Plop, it goes underneath. This is the bar that has to close above 26, uh, 2067.75. And it has to do it either in this bar or the next bar. If it doesn't do it by the next bar, this is going even deeper down, uh, d deeper to the downside. So you could do the same thing with the technicals. Yeah, the technicals and the MACD is still very negative. Stochastics flattening out at 10 percent, but not showing any real strength. So we're in an area where you should try to find some support. Whether that support can hold at 2066, 2065 on the E-minis, it's going to be uh, difficult. I think it's going to try at least to hold you and try to test the 269, 270, 2069, 2070 area on the 200 period exponential moving average. That's why I add candles. That's why I add other techniques like moving averages, MACD, the moving average convergence, divergence, and the slow stochastic. Enough. Let's get out of here. And let me go to the dollar. Let me show you what's going on in the dollar in the Chapman wave. Uh, here we go. Uh, DXY is the dollar index. Leg D. That's what I've been waiting for. And MACD is still quite strong. The histogram is turned positive. Those little green bars there above the 0% line. But, but the stochastic is only a 73%. It is rallying, but it's only a 73%. I would like to see it holding steady. That's a big deal above 80 percent. See, it couldn't hold steady here. It just went up with those five, six bars and then crossed negative. That's a terribly uh, poor, uh, terribly poor action. So um, what we're looking at now, I think I can do it. Yes, there's a 120 minute chart. The 120 minute chart just squeaked to a peak F. That's what I'm going to call it on the 120 minute chart. However, it is also showing signs that it, it's wanting to make a rectangle formation. And if the dollar breaks now, here we get to the gold. If the dollar breaks, closes, 95.87 was the low so far this morning. If the dollar closes, and this moving average right here, I just want to double check. I'm giving you the right number. Yep, the 50 period moving average. I don't use it very often, but sometimes it just strikes me as being, as it did there, strikes me as being a very important support level. In this case, 95.72. If the dollar index between now and a Sunday night when the uh, vote is over, I don't know whether they've already calculated the vote or it has to go to Monday, uh, it doesn't matter. If the dollar actually is, is plunging, breaking 95.72, breaking 95.60, testing the 95.33 200 period exponential moving average, hey, that's going to be very important to say, watch the euro because all of a sudden the euro is going to be able to find enough strength to try to take out the candle high of 1.12774 that was made on the 29th at 5 o'clock, I guess 5 o'clock would be in the morning. Yeah. So uh, let me just double check when that was made. No, 5 o'clock in the evening, 1659. Oh, okay. So now what we're looking at is when I put the whole piece of the puzzle together, I have to add the TLT. Why? Because the TLT is up 97 cents at 116.59. Sounds like a big deal. It's not a big deal in the daily chart, although it's trying to make an H that turns into a cup formation, positive cup formation. But here's the issue. The issue is that the weekly chart, I've spoken about this for quite some time, saying 114.80s is going to be the 200 period exponential moving average, really key support that it needs to hold. If it can't hold it, that's going to be a big negative. So we're going to be watching that. I'll just make it real easy. The TLT will say that this market is going lower and a lot lower if it can start to trade in the 121 and a half to 122.80 area. As soon as it can get there and hold, 
I'd like to say 123.40. Let's go one step at a time. Let's go talk about the 122 area. But 123.50 really says, hey, now I'm building some real good strength. I've broken above the 200 period exponential moving average resistance in the uh, daily chart. The next one is 124.17, the sm smooth um, moving average, 200 period moving average, or simple, let's call it the simple moving average. That's the area that you want, really want to see to say money is going back into bonds, the so-called safety of bonds, as the negativity in the stock market unfolds. Now, I was asked if I would please look at some weekly charts of the down the S&P. I'd like to do that. I'm going to do it in the context of this. The market hasn't closed. We've still got four and a half hours to go. And in that, those four and a half hours, a lot has to happen. But in the meantime, look at the weekly chart of the S&P. It's made a peak E at 2134.72. And that was the week of the 22nd of May. It's gone underneath that long term up channel. The technique you of using the MACD and stochastic says that they are very poor, yet the price is held. That's always a good sign because price is the arbiter of a trend. But in this case, the price is also broken decisively this week below the nine period exponential moving average. So it's not quite the same as the Dow. It's a little bit stronger than the Dow, but it's not a strong chart at all. It's a very weak chart showing that big cup for the arch formation, that rounding top. And what's really important about the close today, and I always have to say, the day is young. Anything can happen between now and the close. But this is a peak E, and it's going to take a tremendous amount to get to 2134.73 to go to an all time high in, in this time frame. What is this time frame? It's a time frame really of July, unless something spectacular happens next week. I just don't see what's going to be spectacular on the upside. I mean, whatever. Let's say they resolve the Greek problem. What's that got to do with us, really? Uh, it does have other implications, but basically, we're looking at our charts. We're looking at the RTH, the um, retail index. This is the RTH. This is the this is the market vectors retail ETF. Oh, that's the reason why it's there. Um, having pulled back for the past four weeks, five weeks from the high that was made at seventy-eight, seventy-five. Still a very gentle pullback. MACD and stochastic, if you were looking at it, I would have said, oh, you're down in the 71 to 70 area for sure. But now look at this. This is a pattern that I drew quite some time ago, and I'm going to show you exactly what the implication is. I'll move it across. There's the weekly chart. Let me go to format. I'm going to go to space to the right. I'm going to give it about 14. Here we go, 14 weeks. There it is. That's what I've drawn in. Now, am I going to be correct or am I going to be absolutely incorrect? Well, as I see it right now, the left side, right side price time match has been met in the first level of support. Now we're going to see, and all you need to see at 75.34 is two points lower over the next week. And that RTH will turn that Chapman Wave inside wedge support level into the cushion on the way to the downside, going to 70 by the 21st of August. I'll be right if you're like me, you're always looking for ways to diversify your financial portfolio. Everbank's innovative market safe CD can help you diversify while protecting your principal deposit. In fact, Everbank unveiled a new five year market safe power metal CD, which combines the power of gold, silver, and copper. Metal prices are currently low, so this CD could really deliver. Consider the facts you get exposure to three valuable metals in one index CD and have the potential to earn up to 45% capped upside payment at maturity if the metals increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should they decrease? No worries. There's zero risk to your principal here, as you still get 100% of it back. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. No annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest is paid on the CD. Intrigued yet? The July 9th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is a member FDIC. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Dick, Missy's out. Dow's down 23. SP is down 2. Now, I, I promised that I'd be looking at the IBB the other day. I ran out of time. I went to the tour. I said on, on Technical Friday, which is today, we'll talk, talk about it as, as Thursday today, being the last day of the week. I said I'd talk about the patterns in a more detailed way that we're looking at. Now, I think it was Jennifer from Wellesley that called the other day. Yep, it was Jennifer from Wellesley called about BIB. And I said, I, 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 I ran out of time, but I said I would take a little bit off if it takes out today's low, and that was the day of the 20, uh, 29th. So now what I'm going to say is this. Um, it did take that out, and if you didn't take off, this is just a perfect time. Biogen IDEC, Biopharma. The pattern that I'm looking at says, yes, there could be another bit of a rally if there's any rally, any strength left over at all. More likely than not, what we're looking at is a situation where the high of yesterday, of 410, 40998, um, becomes the high for this particular phase. And if it takes out the low of the 29th, 395, if it, goes, if it closes below 395, Watch out below. It goes straight down to 380, and my target is 376 just for the first phase of this down move in Biogen IDEC Pharmaceuticals. So I'm going to suggest that uh, if you didn't take anything off then, I don't want to take, uh, you know, you got in correctly. You got in with a core position, I believe, if, if, I, if my memory serves me correctly, it called a long time ago. Um, and I'm, I don't want to change that position. You were correct, and you ran it for a fantastic gain. 
I'm suggesting money management says this is the most probably the, the most risky time for the biotechs. And I'm going to recommend taking something off right now. Just something. Something says I've made X amount of money profit. I want to I want to lock in the number. The all time high was 480 trading at 404 80 points low 20 percent low. I want to lock in uh, something that says I'm managing my money. I'm not letting it just sit there and, and have things happen. And that way you can plan to put it back. You can even say, hey, if it's going to come down to the change of period moving average between 380 and 376, I might just put it back there. After all, if it drops 50 points from there, that's a heck of a lot better than uh, 80 points or more from where we are right now. But I would do some homework at that point because it will be testing the left side low of 368.88 made in May of this year, first week of May. And I'm expecting that this art formation is going to be a potent uh, a, a trigger point for a move down in, in Biogen, which is one of the leading biotech companies. And I've got many other things that say that, that the biotechs for the very first time are beginning to be meeting a lot of resistance as profits become a little questionable if the FDA is correct in saying you cannot uh, get an umbrella drug to cover all sorts of things under one particular uh, genesis under one particular um, FDA approval. Right now, the FDA approval has become very selective and said, yes, we're going to approve it, but only for X number of patients. And there'll be, here's the kicker, X number of costs. Instead of saying 100,000, 200,000, whatever it is, for a year's worth or sometimes 80,000 for a three or five session uh, series, this is going to be different. So I'm saying this is the time to take some off. I, I actually would take more than some. I would take off at least a third of my position, but that's two separate things. You want to know about it. I wasn't, we didn't have enough time to talk. So I just wonder if, if you're actually there and listening, give me a call. We can talk a little more about it. Now what I want to do is talk about a technique and I, IBB. Um, the technique that I have written here called the Chapman Wave Unconventional Flat Base Restart. And what that says is that you get the pattern that I call it a peak D within three bars, you get a, a, a new high. And then it starts what looks like an instant restart. But in fact, what it does, it makes slightly higher highs, but it keeps coming back to the low bar. And the unconventional flat base restart takes out the most important low. In this case, we'll start off with the low of uh, on the 2nd of June, the low of 360.28. But it did it a couple of times. It went all the way down to the 357s. And that's why I said that it was very unusual to have that sudden spike. It was by Genidec, in fact, which created it, that big spike on May, uh, June the 18th, where the um, IBB gapped up, opened at 368, and went all the way to 378, and then continued higher to a doji top at 385.02. And I drew this in for my uh, subscribers on my opening call. And I said, I'm calling this an alternate count. Technically, it's only B. But no, if you've done enough homework and you understand the different techniques, this is the Chapman Wave unconventional flat base restart. And that says you can go to a D, maybe even an E. But when you come down, you're going to test the 357s and probably take it out. And I've got a left side, right side price time match says it should do it by the 8th of July. Wow, that's just in a short while. All right, we'll be back. Basil Chapman, Piper Technicians Hour. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service Fibonacci 24 7 and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the markets opened and even on weekends each Monday you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out and throughout the week when warranted Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day this will be up to the date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading in Larry's first week alone he sent out 25 charts six videos and a full report to his subscribers in just one week if you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade then larry's service fibonacci 24 7 is something that you must try right now new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk sign up now to larry pesavento's fibonacci 24 7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters you know what's cool Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, well, folks. So we're looking at the IBB, the iShares, the NASDAQ Biotech ETF. Talking about the chapter of unconventional site based restart, which says that the level that you started from is the left that you should be coming back to. And I've got a left side, right side price time match. If this H pattern that we're looking at right there in the 120 minute chart says that the IBB by Monday afternoon, Tuesday morning, instead of trading at 370, above the round number 375 high of yesterday, is closing under 366, 365 actually, 365s. I want to see that. And if that happens, 363 is the 200 period exponential moving average in the 120 minute chart and that's the next support level but if it takes that out 360.60 was the low that was made um, at four o'clock on the 29th of june so we're going to be looking at that as uh starting to break under the key support level let's go to ken in kansas city ken how are you i'm very good Devezel. how are you i'm well thank you uh, I'd like to have you take a look at X. It's uh, pretty close. To it's 52-week low. I'd like to get your advice on it. I do. You know, I do not own it. It's the it's the strangest stock. It goes up when you least expect it, and it goes down after it's made that move. And you think, wow, you know, something's going on that's very positive. And then it turns out there is nothing there. So it's trading at 20.11. This is U.S. Steel. It's had this H pattern that goes to a lowercase H pattern that goes to a lowercase M pattern. It is absolutely 20.13 was key support back on the 26th of January. 
Today's low is 20.11. It's taking it out. And my rule of thumb is, let's just see if there's a left side, right side price tie match here. Uh, right there. Okay, and now I'm going to do the right side. Make it uh, red, because that's all pink. Pink's good. Here we go. Yeah, Ken, I, I just don't even, it's beyond me how you can explain this stuff. But from the low bar that was made on the 26th of January to the peak D high that was made on the 15th of April, tax day, 2768, it's come back to the day. No, it's one day early. I'm sorry, two, one day early. If you had to count the bars, it is one day. And it is, what was the low? 20.62. Uh, no, it never took it out. Never took it out. Today, it's taken it out. Technically, it should go tomorrow, but it didn't realize that tomorrow was a public holiday. So um, this is absolutely amazing. And so all I'm going to say is the bar that takes out the left side low, you've got that bar or at the latest, one more bar to get right back in. And then the bounce that occurs has to take out a very important left side peak or a moving average. In this case, it would be 2138 to 2196. So that's uh, for U.S. Steel. But, I, but the tone of your voice had this kind of questioning, is it getting close to a time where I could consider having a sort of a starter position? Is that kind of what you were going to say? That's, that's, that's exactly my, my thinking, yes. So I'm going to recommend two things. One is that if, in fact, U.S. Steel, because, you know, we keep hearing about it. I, I don't know how much steel is being used these days in the autos. I know a lot more aluminum is being used. But if it's back to the issue of, uh, yes, in fact, you are, there's a connection between the airline, uh, the airplanes and the cars and steel, then I, I'd imagine that you'd see a rally both in steel and you'd be, see a rally in, let me just see, Ford or Chrysler. There's not, there's not the correlation that used to be. Oh, they both look terrible. GM, let me look. Oh, man, Ford is testing. GM's testing this 200 period moving average um, in the um, monthly chart. And I'm going to go to this one right here. Fiat Chrysler also breaking down, even though they're having record sales in the Jeep division. All right, let's just be very practical about it. I'm going to suggest to you keep your eye on U.S. Steel, but it's probably going to be more in the 18 area. There's really no support that I can look at here to give you. Let's just say <laughs> that I'm not going. I would not do anything for the next three sessions at least today. Monday, Tuesday. By Wednesday, there's a chance that we might be looking at it and it could be starting another bounce. But at this point, as a, an intermediate term, six to eight week position, I just don't see it at all. If anything, it's a six to eight week position on the short side. But because any rally from this level should probably come back and do a retest. Now I'm going to step aside. Let me look at AK Steel, although they're really in different sectors uh, of the steel industry, as, as I understand. Let me just AK Steel. And also management has a lot to do. Yeah, AK Steel, same thing. 371, going to test the 362 low. Schweitzer Steel, if I can ever remember. S is W. No, that's yeah, Charles I think Schwab. Yeah, goes about the same too. Yeah, you know, I, I'm just going to say, let's, I've got my eye on both aluminum and steels. I don't want to do anything just yet. I want to know what's going on. And these, the way that these stocks have been acting is telling me that in a sense, oh, what is the steel index? I've got it right here. If I can just find it, uh, my steel index. It wasn't an STL, uh, STLD, no, is that what you call a steel dynamics? No. I have a steel index somewhere. I just go and find it right now. And that steel index, <laughs> I thought I had it right here. Um, I'll try to find it, but there is also an ETF on steel. And I, I suspect it will be the same thing. No, I'm going to recommend uh, even STLD, which is Steel Dynamics, which actually I think has, makes metal cases, um, is not looking too great. I'm going to say hold off. Not only that, I, 
I'll be talking in a moment about, just before we wrap up, I'll be talking about the weekly charts as they might be closing this week in the Dow, the S&P, the New York Stock Exchange, and the others if I get a chance. So let's say, call me a week, call me Wednesday. This coming week, Tuesday or Wednesday, probably Wednesday is even better because it would give all the markets a general sense of where they're going by Monday afternoon, Tuesday. But I'm thinking that U.S. Steel is not anything other than a bounce. Could be a nice percentage. I mean, 12% if it goes from 20 to uh, 25. No, that's even more. That's 20%. Uh, but I just don't, I, I can't see it just yet. Hope that okay. helps you, Ken. That's a very big help. Thank you very much. Do you have time to look at another oil stock? I, I'm going to go to, give me the name, and I'm also going to go to Gary, who wants to look, Jerry, who wants to look at the uh, USO. So you want to look at okay. what? U-W-T-I. It's three oh, times Oh, U-W-T-I. I'm going to put yeah. that together uh, with, our, with our next caller. Thanks so much for calling. Thank Can you. Have a Bye -bye. great weekend. So let's go to Jerry in the back bay. Jerry, how are you? All right. How are you? What a beautiful well, day here. You. What a beautiful day here. Yeah. Unbelievable. Absolutely spectacular day. Yes. And yesterday it turned out I played, I played tennis and it turned out to be an absolutely magnificent day after a heavy, heavy downpour in the morning. So you'd like to look at... USO. So, and you've been of the opinion and of the of the position to say that the consolidation that was taking place would resolve itself to the downside. And I was saying we're in a rectangle formation. Keep thinking of it as a rectangle formation with very limited upside. But the but the level to watch would be the low bar of the week of the 29th of May of 1909, and I called it 19. And if that breaks. All of a sudden, you do have the H pattern forming. And in fact, we're at 1932 right now, up 22 cents. So the USO, which is United States Oil, ETN, I believe it is, it's uh, a fund, um, has held very well. But this is a very critical period because the left side low of 1909 <clears throat> was taken out yesterday. And just exactly what I was telling Ken a moment ago, in this particular pattern in the Chapman wave, where the left side low of an arch formation is taken out, you have one bar, that bar that takes out the left side low, you want to close above it. But if you close below it, you have another bar to go. But that bar has to make sure it closes above 1909 in this case, and you're at 1932. And that says you can rally to the next level, and the next level is only 1971 where the 200-period moving average is, or the high that was made two, three days ago of 20, round number 20. So I, I concurred with you before. I just said we might be looking at time rather than price. Just You're going to have to have some patience. Yeah. You've got patience. Yeah, I, I know that. You but know, I'm, I'm, looking at, I, I'm looking at fundamentals and... Uh, uh, they're, they're having the meetings with Iran, uh, and uh, the deadline is uh, July 7th. Uh, oh, if, July if, 7th. If, it, if Iran comes on, this thing is going to plummet. Uh, if, okay. Iran doesn't, if Iran doesn't do a deal, it'll rally and then go down. Because okay, and we know that uh, Iran, is, uh, their, their motto is delay, 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 and... Um, we don't know if that's going to be the case here as well. No, yeah, that's true. But it, might, right, it might suit them this time not to delay, right? Right. Okay, so, so let's just thank make it. So I'm just going to suggest, I want to look at the crude oil itself. Crude oil, yeah, it's the same pattern. So I, I don't, I can't change anything that I've said. I believe very strongly that a close below 19 would have to be in the 1850 area. On a weekly basis, a close below 1850 says, uh-oh, this is going to make that arch formation come down to the 1716 area in the USO. I'm looking at crude oil. That would say that the contract, the continuous contract, under 5560, let's call it 5550, is at 5762. That changes the complexion completely. It does mean that the MACD, which is still good in the weekly chart, is might hold up the price. See, that's why I say rectangle formations can last a lot longer than your patience. Yeah. I have to say that the left side low bar of the 29th, the week of the 29th of May, that's very important because so far it's held. And it could even hold once again into next week. You just told me there's news that could affect uh, crude oil negatively or sharply negatively or sharply positively. Right, so the level right, to no. watch in the USO would be um, 
the low, I would call it 18, the close below 1850. But on the right. upside, uh, on the upside, 2150, which looks far away, but we, we know with crude oil, sometimes the moves can be quite vicious. A close above 2150 is the high that we're looking at, but a close above 2190 says, uh oh, leg B, you could go a little bit higher and keep stalling with a sideways move. I don't see a yeah. breakout to the upside yet based on the technicals, but I do see that the base needs to hold and a close in the below 1850s in the USO would be a negative, and then you see the price come down quicker. Uh, uh, than, thank you very much. Yeah, that's that's very helpful. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for calling. Have a great Fourth of July, and if you're in the back you, bay, you'll be able to see the fireworks. And good. That's always fun. Right, take care. Bye. Take care. So, okay, now let's do a couple of things. I said uh, uh, in the remaining period, I would like oh, UTWI. Uh, let me just look at that. U WTI, UWTI, I think it is. Yep, uh, three times long crude ETN. Is that what we were looking at? UWS. Okay, it's exactly the same thing. So, can you want to look at UWTI? I'm going to say the same thing that if the U UWTI closes under 270, I, here I'm not even using a weekly chart. Any daily close under 270 says, uh oh, watch out. You could be going lower. And any close above, I'm just going to make it real easy. It's a 297 UWTI VS three times long crude ETN. If it closes about 335, then you got to consider that it's going to test the upper side of this rectangle formation. Just make it real easy. But I, I don't see a big breakout. Now I'm going to do this. So I want you to go to the IYC, which is the, is the ETF that no one ever talks about. It's the micro, iShares Dow Jones U.S. Consumer Cyclical uh, Sector Trust. Whew, what a long name. So I, I, don't, I don't recall hearing anyone on CNBC ever mentioning this. I'm sure somebody has. I just haven't heard it. So it's kind of under the radar, holding very well in the same kind of rectangle formation and, and very big arch formation that we saw in crude oil. Uh, no relation. That's all. Um, what I'm looking at in the IYC is make it real easy. It's trading at 144.07, down 43 cents. By Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, if it has gone below 141.51 is the low that we're looking at. If it closes, actually, if it goes at any point underneath 141, that's very negative. If it closes under 141.51, that says be really careful because that weekly chart is going to be making a trough C, a leg C to the downside. But the monthly chart is 139.94 is key support, and that could be tested because sometimes these rectangles make a slow decline without breaking down, and they just make lower highs and lower lows, but all within a tiny kind of a rectangle formation. So that's what I want to look at. I want to look at the IWM. I don't remember if I did that before. Very negative pattern right now. It's at 123.92, down $1.31. This is, I'm almost sure this is going to be a PG. If, if it closes here today, and on Tuesday, it, it is even just testing, doesn't even have to close, but testing 122.90, uh, point, point lower, that's going to suggest strongly that we've got at best a rectangle formation with a test of 120, 24, the low of the week of the 8th of May. But most importantly, it suggests that the monthly chart doji is going to be really important because the whole of July might not see a new high, but we might see a close below the 124.40s nine period exponential moving average monthly cushion because it's walked the 90 in May up until now. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians out on May, I uh, mean, July the 2nd. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin here on TFNN. Hello, folks. We're back. And, uh, yes, yeah, so a couple of things of July, July the 2nd. And I just want to say a happy birthday. Someone special. And uh, the other thing is, uh, have a good trip. So uh, we're looking at uh, VRX was a question in the den. I thought I'd get to it quickly because it's Valiant Pharmaceutical International, branded drugs. Uh, just been an amazing win up until three months ago when it made its all-time high at 246.01. And I used a phantom peak to get to that peak D at 246.01 on the May the 28th. And it's pulled back quite sharply from 246 to 220. But I think that it's got 218 is already the level to see if it tests. If it takes that out, I would start to lighten up a little bit. But because the monthly chart is so strong, I consider, yeah, maybe if it can get to the 202, 198 area and hold um, any rally in the market at that point, including the, by the biotechs, I would say this is pretty, should be number one on your list. That's where you can add back anything you take off now and just say, hey, it's a trade. Maybe it will go to D. Maybe it won't go to D. But in the meantime, if it's holding and the MACD is still strong, stochastic's still up in the 86 area, um, 
it's at 90 right now. That'd be a good slide. So this is just a cautionary. This is this is really basically money management that we're looking at. Um, okay, I wanted to go through a couple of other things. The SMHs. The SMHs. I had a very sharp pullback. They've almost made a one to one to the downside. That's the A to B equals C to D. In my work, it's trough B that's been made at the 200 period moving average. Just the, as the importance of the. 200 period moving average in the weekly chart and the TLT. This is the daily chart. It went right to the 54.42 level. Went a little bit lower at 54.24, trying to bounce. I don't think, and for I should say, as subscribers, we are short from quite a, quite a lot higher. Uh, we are, actually we're only short in our positions. We're going to take position down the long side. Didn't work out. We just missed it. Well, actually, I, I say we just missed it. We might still get it, but it's already done the move I wanted. So it's going to be a little uh, tricky if we get it later on in the day. Um, all right, so this is the situation. Um, the VIX index, VIX dot X, and I should say that we are along the VIX index. Um, the VIX index trading at 1683 right now. If you look at the 120 minute chart, you'll see how perfectly it formed the peak E from the low of 1193. It went straight up to 19.18. Was that high yesterday? 19, I'm sorry, 19.80. Was the high yesterday? Get rid of that. That was a mistake. 19.80 is trading at um, is trading at 16.83 right now. So it's got a long way to go to get back there. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, what it's saying is, if we close anywhere around here, even get back a little bit, that's the first really strong weekly close we've had since going back to um, the week of the 12th of December. And then you had a very strong intra week ready on the, the week of the 19th at 25, 22 and then pull back. So this is a very so far, if you're a bear, this is exactly what you wanted to see. Halfway through the day, market gets a little bit of cold feet because of what's going to happen over the weekend. But anything can happen between now and the close. Mostly it's the close today that we're looking at weekly close and the candle in the monthly chart close last uh, month for the first time in months above the nine period moving average. Touched the 200, couldn't close above 1995. Look where we are right now, holding the nine period black line moving average. That says fund managers are starting to buy the um, index, the volatility index options, and those options are based on all sorts of things. We've got an actual index itself that. Uh, we're long, and that's all there is to it. And what's really important about it is that this candle that we spoke about three days ago and then spoke about uh, yesterday, and then again today I'm speaking about, it, is just so important because if there is a strong close, and even if there's a week, even if there's a vote that the market on Sunday night sees the futures up 15, 20, who knows? It's, it doesn't solve anything to the Greek crisis. It just takes away one thing that was a, a little bit of a cloud that's hanging over and that cloud's going to be there for a while. So folks, have a fantastic July the 4th weekend. I'll be back this afternoon with Tom O'Brien for an interview. Um, and just be safe and have a wonderful time. See you. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.